TGR News, broadcasting from the State of Israel. Welcome back to TGR News. Hello, hello. This week we'll talk about the 14 killed this month in terrorist attacks. And we will continue to keep you updated on what is happening here in the State of Israel between the left and right wing voters over the Supreme Court reform and how it's tearing the country in half. But first, let's say thank you. Thank you for everything you guys are doing. It's amazing to be able to be a part of. You guys are really such a blessing to all these people here in the state of Israel. Uh, this week, especially, we were able to put together more uh, uh, special uh, thing that uh, uh, food distribute distribute uh, uh, more than what we usually do because of uh, the holidays. And uh, you won't see it in this video as you usually see it. Uh, I'll make a little short clip of it. Hopefully it came out okay and post it in the next few days. And uh, like I always say, if any of you guys want to be a part of this uh, ministry and haven't yet, there's links below every one of our videos to the Patreon page and to the Support Us page. Or you can just go to thegoldenreport.com and click on the Support Us page and uh, find any way that makes it easiest and best for you. And it is such a blessing that you guys are doing here. It is so amazing, and it's such a wonderful witness to be a part of for the people here in Israel, the Jewish people, and it's coming from the Christian community. It's just absolutely a beautiful thing to be a part of. Like I've said for a few times, it's the best witness you could ever give to these people. So amen to that. Amen to everything you guys are doing, amen. and thank you so, so much. Well, let's get started. Yeah. Let's do it. On Sunday, on a busy road of the Samaria area near Nabalus, an Arab terrorist cell opened fire, killing two brothers at point blank range. The two brothers were on their way home from Yeshiva, Jews Bible School, when the terrorists fired 12 rounds, killing them. All the other Arabs in the area did nothing to help them. All they did was take videos with their phones and praise the terrorists. And they also give, they always do that. But this was like people, you see people in blood taking their last, last breath and they just filming it with their phones and celebrating the killing and the hatred. And this is our country. This is what's going on this was, yeah, just That's what we have to live with. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a horrible thing. And just like all of them are, every terrorist attack is just, unspeakable evil and hatred and we're supposed to and we're the ones always under attack from the from the from European countries and the US usually to make peace you know we're the ones that expected to make the peace well you know maybe maybe some of that pressure that the rest of the world's putting on Israel maybe it ought to take a second even if they don't agree with Israel and they if they really want peace here and they really care about what's ha happening here, not just trying to destroy the state of Israel, then maybe they should say, wait a minute, maybe we should also pressure the Palestinians or the Israeli Arabs uh, to, to, to try to go for more peace, you know, and instead of just putting it all, saying it's Israel's fault. Yeah. Right? Well, the Jewish citizens that live in the area of this uh, terrorist attack that Ola was just talking about were fed up with all, this, uh, all these attacks and killings that have been going on. In an uproar of anger, they began to go into the Arab village of Hawaria, lighting on fire businesses, cars, and homes. Now, I don't support such actions, but I'm sure we all can understand where they're coming from and why they did such things. It's, um, you know, it, it re I really don't support such actions for many reasons. Number one, the old saying, I'm sure your mother raised you the way my mother raised me. Two wrongs don't make a right. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Yeah. All those, those, uh, those, those ways of living, right? But uh, more than that, it's, it, in Israel, Ola don't like it when I talk about this, but it's a fact of life. We have the UN who's just waiting for us to make a mistake, to come down and just turn against us and everything else. We have right now... The U.S., we are so dependent on the U.S. for replenishing our Iron Dome uh, missiles and, and all, all of our military, almost all of our military equipment. And right now, the U.S. is under very 
left wing government that does not really like the state of Israel very much. Yeah. So we always have to play this game where we have to, you know, take care of business on one hand, but we can't be ignorant to the rest of the political arena that we live in and, and turn everyone against us, right? We, yeah. we have to play this game. And uh, when the civilians do stuff like this and take the laws in their own hands, the only thing it does is, like, right after the terrorist attack, instead of giving the military having the freedom to go in and say, okay, now we're going to go get these guys. Yeah. After such a, the, the, the Hawaria uh, village went through such horrible uh, destruction that uh, the IDF says, okay, well, the, the Israel has to say, okay, we, we can't go in right now. Because uh, it'll look bad, and it'll give. We have to now support the Arabs, which, by the way, right away the U.S. said that uh, we had to uh, give them compensation and everything else. And actually, Israeli raised one million shekels to compensate them. Yes, you know, left wing, of course. Uh, and by the way, the guy who been compensated, one of them that have a big garage of cars that been burned. Uh, we find the proof on social media, especially, that he's supporting terror. Yes. He's supporting terror. So what do you think? Where is this money going to go? Poor families that their house been burned? I'm not sure. No, no, of course not. That's where all the money goes, that when you give to them. All the money goes to arm themselves to attack and kill more Jews. Well, during the time of this uh, terrorist attack in Aqaba in Jordan, Israeli officials met with Palestinian Authority officials, Egyptian and American officials. They were meeting to talk about how to calm things down. Of course, America and the rest of the Arab officials said that Israel needs to uh, stop making missions to arrest terrorists in Arab areas. This terrorist attack was a great example that Israel does not need to stop finding uh, and arresting terrorists. The U.S. asked Israel to stop building Jewish homes in the Judea and Samaria areas. Smotrich and Ben Gvir said that they will not stop building in our own country. Ben Gvir, I keep telling you, keep an eye on this guy. And Smotrich is, uh, is basically the same as Ben Gvir in our coalition right now. The, yeah. um, you they, know, they're always demanding on, from Israel things. Yes. Like uh, the Palestinian Authority came with the list of demands to this uh, event. They never demand from them nothing. They demand only from us. Every time we meet this exactly, kind of thing, like I said, they demand, we have yeah. to stop this. We have to stop this. We As if to... we're the attackers. Yes. It's called IDF, right? Yeah. It's the I Israeli Defense, Defense Force. Yes. yes, but they always demand from us things. They have a list of demands that we have to follow So and, and hope that maybe the terror attacks will stop, which they never do, by the way. Right. Yeah. Well, and another thing is, is keep you think about in that meeting they had in Jordan, the same, the U.S. You know, under this Biden admin, uh, uh, Biden administration, the U.S. was on the Arab side. Everything that the Arabs were asking, that's what the U.S. was asking. If you pay attention, the U.S. is is right along with the Arabs recently, not usually, but recently. Well, on Sunday in the Knesset, the law to allow the uh, sentencing of terrorists to death, to the death penalty, passed in its first calling. I'll say it again. I don't believe that this will make a difference. Most likely, I believe that it will only raise more hate from the UN and other places while not causing any uh, decrease in terrorist attacks, seeing how they're already ready to die anyway. You know, it's... Uh, I've said it before, and, and this government is, is doing it. I've said it for a long time, but finally this government's doing it. The best deterrence is, uh, is, is get, taking away the respect and clout and money and everything else. The family of the terrorists, that uh, what they get. Because their family, the mothers, the fathers, the uncles, the brothers, they're the ones who raise these. They pick the, 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 the family member out that they could groom to do something. And when they send them off to do it, then they have an easy life for the rest of their life they here in Israel. They have pensions yeah. until they death. And the respect and in respect. the community. So if you take that away, you'll make a big difference. Yeah. Well, you know, I disagree with you. I think death penalty can help. 
and time will show. Well, well, I'm not against it. I never said don't do it. I just said spend your energy to do something that I think would actually make the difference. Yeah. You know? I'm not against it, of course. Absolutely. But it's together they should be. On Monday in the northern Dead Sea uh, area, a uh, terrorist opened fire from his car at an intersection at another car with a family in it. Thank God the family was not killed. In another car, a 27-year-old man was injured and, he, and was in serious condition when he made it to the hospital. He died shortly after arriving at the hospital. The terrorist drove their car to the nearest Arab neighborhood to burn his car and take a getaway car to try and stop the police from finding them. This made the 14th, 14 that died this month from terrorist attacks. 14. And uh, this one, this young man, this 27-year-old young man, he was an American-Israeli. Yeah. Right? The name of the man was Alan Ginales, an American-Israeli citizen, an American citizen who is Israeli. He came to Israel to serve in the IDF and fell in love with the country. Here I want to talk about the reverse. Maybe we'll talk about this guy. Like he is, He's amazing. He's amazing. And I love people who come to Israel, fell in love with the country and trying right. to... You know, really feel feel, and he of course Jew, but um, this guy um, was a good example of reverse discrimination. I don't know if it is the right word to, to, to yeah. describe it, but okay. it's like discrimination, but the opposite way. It's when you're trying to be so politically correct that you actually discriminate the majority instead of the minority. Right. And what I mean by that is. If you remember the story of Shirin Abu Akleh, the reporter, the, Israel, uh, the American citizen, uh, Palestinian reporter, Arab, she right. was Arab, who, be, who has been killed accidentally by, we're still not sure, but maybe IDF right. bullet, when she was between the Arabs and uh, IDF uh, firefight. Firefight, right. Accidentally. And uh, there was a big mess, and Biden's, gover Biden's government made even wanted to open uh, an investigation, an investigation asked the, the FBI IDF to, to investigate our soldiers. Our soldiers. It was a big deal. Now this U.S. citizen being killed by terror attack. People. Where's Biden now? What, why don't Biden? he? Why don't he send the I FBI to any, investigate the terrorists? Yes. What's going on? Yeah. This is reverse discrimination, how I call it. Right. That's a great point because, you know, they're both Americans and both got killed here in the state of Israel, right? One was killed by possibly misfire or by mistake, by, by what, and uh, the other one was deliberately killed. And the one that was deliberately killed, Biden is not making a big mess about, or the Biden administration is not making a big mess about and trying to get uh, get to get to the bottom of it. And uh, but he was an American Jew. But the American Arab, they that one they really wanted to do that had to had to come out and, and attack Israel yeah. about, right? Yeah. Why, why, why don't you do the same thing for the other side? Well, politically correct. Too uh, much politically correct. Uh, look at all the protests that are happening here in the streets in Israel over ridiculous things. Uh, maybe in America that people should start protesting about why why don't you investigate this one like you like you wanted to investigate the last yes. one. Yes. Yeah. What's the difference? Right. On Wednesday, the protesters came to a uh, new height here in Israel for over this uh, thing that's been going on now for I think it's what eight weeks now. Yeah. They blocked the roads in the country and causing chaos in the country. They even called it the day of chaos. After the difficult pictures of our country being torn in half, Netanyahu addressed the nation that night. He gave a speech on how to protest in democracy and how not to protest in democracy. He gave an example of 20 years ago, half of the country felt like the world was coming to an end. And it was at the end of, and it was going to be the end of the state of Israel when over eight thousand Israelis were taken, stripped from their homes in Gaza to give to the Arabs. When the right wing protested, they did not uh, cross the line like the the left wing protesters are now. And what we're talking about is is the left wing protesters are attacking the police. There are. They are first of all, they're calling for absolute anarchy and for the and for civil war. I never heard civil twenty years ago in a protest, no one talking about civil yeah. war. Yeah. And um, 
It was a good thing that it was a good speech Netanyahu gave, and of course the left wing's already already trying to find holes and yeah, you know. yeah. Well, even if they're blocking the road, maybe it's not so violent, but they're blocking the road and then they, uh, they um, taking from me my right to move freely in the state of Israel. That's against what they're protesting for. Right. They're protesting like it's the end of democracy. It's starting to be dictatorship. Uh, state right but they actually dictator for, to me and taking a right my taking away my right to move freely well, yeah and well, they act like it's nothing well even on that same day the, the the day of chaos they called it they found out that Sarah, Sarah Netanyahu uh, the first lady of Israel right was getting her hair done at a hair salon at nighttime and they came out in thousands over and and blocked her in and she couldn't get out of there and they actually had to call in extra forces and everything to get her home yeah uh -huh. yeah and this come after that the blocked the other lady if you remember we talked about yeah. from uh, taking her daughter it's like they lost it i think they lost it the country is really on fire yeah you're talking about the knesset the member the, from the from the day they had to vote for the first call yes. for the for the reform and for the, the supreme court reform and it was, uh, she had a uh, Down syndrome, no, uh, some kind of a special autistic, needs child, autistic, autistic child. Yeah. And, uh, and they just blocked her at her house and would not let her leave that morning for work because they knew she was headed to vote, right? Yeah. For, for the passing of the law. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh. It's just the, the Israel's really going crazy. With, and, and all of this under the fact that we, this month we've had 14 of our Jewish brothers and sisters killed yeah you know four of them with brothers two and two yeah there are like two families lost t t two children each yeah. like it's it's, a, it's crazy well former prime minister lapid after netanyahu's speech answered and commented on uh, evening on evening news that the public and the mayors in israel needed to just ignore the laws and rebel against this government basically he called for a complete anarchy, anarchy yeah and more chaos. Yeah. Instead of being responsible, you know. Well, and and the left wing protesters don't, are just don't somehow they don't see it. it's spiritual. They just don't see it, you know. Yeah. If you could just sit down with them and explain to them, you're being fed lies. It's not the end of democracy. Actually, it's a, making a better democracy where it gives the voters more power. Yeah. These laws, this basically is true. It's not basically. It's th these laws, this reform is going to give the voters more power and give make the democracy stronger, make it more of a democracy. Yeah, actually, from 1995, the Supreme Court took more and more um, power, power, power to themselves. You know, they're supposed to be equal yes. to the Knesset and to the government. Well, the reason they took more and more power is because they've got themselves in a situation where the Supreme Court now can make, change, and delete laws. Basic yeah, laws. The Supreme Court does not, the, the, the judicial system, it doesn't make laws, it enforce laws. It doesn't legislate, right? There's, that's why it's separated. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the whole way it should be in a democracy. Exactly. Well, that was intense. Yeah, yeah. it was a you know it was a rough week you know especially when you see people dying and then the and then you have your left wing or it doesn't matter what wing is you see the your the 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 your, the people in your country still protesting over stuff and while people are dying you know it's just it was a rough week but hopefully next week will be better. You got anything you want to say? No, I'm upset. I'm very emotional. Like you said, very rough week. I saw one of the um, one of the high rated protesters from the left like um, who have power talked about um, you have, you should refuse um, orders in the army start refusing orders don't take orders oh, from yeah. and then you see a mother of these two boys that been killed that saying continue to go to IDF and serve our country and you compare this two this one is brainwashed the left wing brainwashed and just trying to make a big split in their country and she's the mother she just this week buried buried, buried two, yes. two kids and she still believe in this country she's still trying to 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 um, encourage people to go and protect and fight for our country de defend our country right 
from these crazy uh, Islamic um, radicals. This goes to show you the difference in 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 in, in people. Yeah. Um, well. Okay. Well, don't yeah. forget to join us on the goldenreport.com. And until next week. Shabbat shalom. God bless.